What's up, everybody? It's your favorite friendly bear here uh, on a Tuesday afternoon. I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, pretty sure it's Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon. Uh, it looks like it's August 16th. Right now it's 3.34 p.m. The markets are closed. I was going over some of the trades I took this morning, um, doing a little bit of trade review, and I want to do a quick video on the new uh, tool that we we looked at in the live stream this morning. I live stream nearly every morning, um, 8, 10 a.m. Central Time. I am Central Time, so down there it's 3.34 p.m. Central Time. Um, and we looked at a new tool this morning, a new order flow tool called Bookmap. And I just wanted to go over that a little bit more um, and kind of see what we were looking at on it uh, in pre-market um, and uh, what actually unfolded um, um, after the, the bell opened. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play a little snippet right now uh, from um, the live stream this morning when we were doing kind of a pre-market analysis. Again, I go live every morning, 8, 10 a.m. Central Time. We do a whole pre-market analysis, and then the market opens at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. So here's a little snippet from this morning of what I was looking at in Bookmap, and then we're going to take a look at actually what unfolded. So guys, you can probably notice something up on my screen that's a little different. We got this thing going on over here. This crazy looking chart. I'm sure most people probably know what this is. This is book map. Um, I got a um, kind of, I got a free trial for it just to check it out to try it. Um, I'm always looking for new order flow stuff to see how it works, and I spent some time with their education education resources. I have tried something similar to this in the past. Um, to be honest with you, I kind of given up. What's up, Major Dave? I've given up, but I, I don't like to have too much stuff up. Um, I don't, I feel like you can always find a reason not to enter a trade. Um, so I want to see if this though um, is helpful in me identifying key levels of support and resistance and seeing if we can integrate it into our existing trading system. Um, I'm thinking about scrapping my Bollinger Bands. I feel like it's too much stuff going on up here um, on these charts. And I want to get better at um, identifying those areas of support and resistance or where price may want to move to or move away from. Um, and I, I still want to use volume profile. We've got a session volume profile up here. We're going to look at the higher time frame charts in a minute. Nothing big is, nothing's really going to change except we're going to have this up on occasion to check things out. One thing that I'll notice, one thing that I'm, I'm thinking about using this for is um, hunt a uh, price is going to seek out liquidity, uh, especially longer term liquidity. Um, and so like this morning, I've got a little bit of a bearish bias. If we just come in and look at uh, cumulative delta or negative cumulative delta on the day, we're already negative on the day. We're trading just around V black chopping around. We'll look at higher time frames, but let's just say our bias was bearish. Um, where would price perhaps want to go to? We can see that there's a massive amount of orders down here on the book at 13,620-ish level, 22 level. Um, one of the strategies, one of the ways we might be able to use this is that if price begins trending, trending in a certain direction, price is going to hunt or seek out liquidity. Um, and so this could be a good price target for us. Um, if, if, uh, if our other signals... You know, our, our normal signals that we use, our normal trading strategy um, corresponds with that. So um, it's something that we're going to kind of have up, but we can see this massive area of order sitting on the book down here. Price is probably going to want to come down um, and either fill those orders um, or um, you know get re repelled away from it. But this might be an area where price is going to get um, sucked down into. And we also can see a bunch of orders up here. Um, it appear at like 50, 52. So, you know, if you were thinking that price might want to come down here and seek this out, getting in around 52, which also happens to kind of correspond with VWAP. Um, and the top of the band here on the one minute, this big area of resistance up here, which popped up, uh, uh, hit a couple times, you might be able to take that short and you would probably try to hold it down to 22. Perhaps, perhaps. It is pre market. I don't trade pre market. So, anything can happen pre market. Um, but we're going to pop this thing up once in a while and take a look at it. Uh, but let's first go into our, there's, there's lots of different ways that we can use this. Um, but that's one way that I think we're going to, we're going to look at today. Um, we can do stuff with like looking at imbalances. Like this is the uh, dome over here. If anybody's used the dome before, some people I know like to trade the dome. Um, we can have this thing up to looking at it. You can like appear at the book and volume. You can find imbalances on the order book. 
or imbalances on the volume. That's essentially cumulative delta. There's also a cumulative delta indicator I can throw up on here, but it's just, it's very similar to Ninja Traders. And uh, I don't want to have too many things going on. This thing over here is kind of cool. This is a chart volume profile. So over here, we've got, you know, an overnight volume profile. Here we've got the session. I can throw up um, just the volume profile that I'm seeing on the chart, which I think might be handy. If price begins to trend, we start to have a breakout. We trend away. And I want to see um, if a low volume node is formed where it might be a good entry on a pullback. Um, I can simply just adjust this chart. Um, or I, what I can do is I can double click on this and it'll actually just reset this chart volume profile and it'll start generating the profile now. So let's say we break out. I can double click on this and it'll start generating a volume profile from the breakout so I can identify those low volume nodes uh, for me to get in. There's a few other th other ways that I think we can use this. I spent a ton of time with it over the weekend learning about it. Um, and I think there's definitely some some stuff that we, we can add to our existing uh, trading strategy um, using order flow. So we're going to we're going to explore some more of this. I just want to let you know that's up here. But right now, let's look at uh, higher time frames and see what we got going on. OK, so that's kind of what we're looking at in pre-market this morning. We had a slight bearish bias coming in. Um, and I was looking at those high levels of liquidity below where the current price was ranging as areas that price might want to get sucked down into. Now, this could also be, we could also flip this. If we came in in the morning and we had a bullish bias coming in the morning, we saw a high area of liquidity above us. We might think that price was wanting to get sucked up into that area. And that might be a good target for us for orders to get filled. Um, so one thing we always want to try to do is try to get at a good price. We don't ever want to short the bottom of it. We don't ever want to buy the top of it. Um, we always want to fight for price. And one things that one of the things that I mentioned uh, in pre-market, a good place to get in was was up here at the VWAP or VWAP um, and the top of the Bollinger Band on the one minute. We can see what happened on the open right here. We can see these are two. This is a one minute chart. This is a five minute chart. And over here is a book map. It's the book map. Uh, chart from this morning. They're all at the same time. As you can see 8.30 a.m. Again, I'm central time, so this is market open for me. 8.30 a.m. down here and 8.30 a.m. down here. So you can see these are basically um, um, at, at the same time. I tried to zoom them in correctly. Uh, so uh, what we had happen was we used that top of the Bollinger Band. We've talked about this before uh, in the channel that on the open, these Bollinger Bands, particularly in the one minute, really, really can hold um on um on those first few impulses but uh having that area of confluence at the top of the bollinger band on the one minute plus vwap at the top there we pin through both of these you can see those two wicks there on the one minute with the idea that price would want to come down to this area of liquidity that would have been an excellent entry or even on this candle even though it's right on the open i think that if this is a strategy maybe we perhaps want to implement it's something we should look at um uh, right, a bearish candle right there on the one minute. We short it, and then oftentimes we're like, well, okay, we shorted it. Now, where do we get out of it? We can use book map as that target area. You know, price came down to 27 on it, uh, right down here, the first area of liquidity before before we saw a bounce. We did see this bounce here. So it came down, filled, filled uh, or got repelled from that area of liquidity, and it came back up to VWAP, came back up to the band, and then look at this nice bearish candle here on the one minute. Another bearish candle in the one minute. It's all pointing downward, right? And then we know we've got these big areas of liquidity that are below us that have not been filled yet. These are probably long in large institutions that have that have large orders on the book that they want to get filled, um, and they're going to manipulate the price down to these levels to make sure that they get filled. Um, so, you know, these these orders down here are sucking price down into them. And that we can see that's exactly what happened. Now, of course, we use this in conjunction with our normal candlesticks or one minute, five minutes, perhaps our 500 volume, which I like to use, which is kind of my my lowest uh, candle chart. Uh, and we can see how price just collapses down into it. And what we want to see as it comes in is all this selling pressure coming in as well, these big selling bubbles. And we can see that on a uh, you know on a one minute chart too. I mean that's this big selling volume coming in on it, right? The big selling pressure <clears throat> coming down, driving price down. What happens? Uh, it, it gets through this liquidity. We get some consolidation, consolidation, consolidation. There's some more liquidity down here that 
that's holding, holding, and then that eventually gets eaten up and filled as well, right? Eventually, what's going to happen is, and we can look on the one minute, um, and this is easy to do, obviously, when you're looking back on it. When the, when the market is open, it's 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 a lot a lot harder. But what eventually happened with this is we come into this bearish down channel, which was um, uh, very clear, and actually the breakout of that channel. Um, is interesting as well. We should look at what, how Bookmap book map reacted on this breakout. We can see this is a very valid trend line. Lots of touches on it. Lots of touches on it. You know, I would say that's a, a very valid trend line on the one minute. We break through it. We come back. We try to te retest the back side of it. And I'd be really interested to see. And I haven't looked at this yet, so I'm not quite sure. 9.58. How did Bookmap react to that at 9.58? Um, let's take a, let's take a peek if I can... Fast forward through here, we come back down again, big area of liquidity. You can see how price gets sucked right down off of VWAP, down back into that area. Um, and then all those sellers coming through on that, all the sell orders, a lot, of, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure to the downside. Still moving down. You can see how price is moving down with these high areas of liquidity that it, that's wanting to get those orders filled, 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 filled. Um, you know, are these large institutions that are wanting to get uh, their orders filled at, at good prices? Because they know that the market, as we talked about this morning, the market does look very bullish. We're in a, we're in a, a you know, breakout of a down channel that started back in January. It's moving up. Um, we're out of that channel. Perhaps these are large institutions that are trying to get in at a good price. Now, for retail traders like us, you know, a 30 point drawdown is horrible, right? It's like massive drawdown on, you know, two or two, one or two, three contracts. You know, we're going to get stopped down on that for large institutions. Obviously, they can endure that drawdown. Now, let's, let's look at 958. And this is that breakout we saw um, over here on the one minute chart that we were looking at. Let's see if I can get it back. Right over here in 959. So, 959. So sorry about that. I needed to adjust this. Um, you can see here that down channel. You can see you know the lower highs coming in, lower highs, lower lows. That down channel that we had pointed on the one minute's pretty clear here. We break out of it. We come back. We retest the back side of it. I think one thing that you like to see as we break out of this channel at, are these big buy orders coming through, um, and then weaker selling on the back side of it. Um, and then as we start to move higher, a lot of buying coming through, a lot of big green bubbles that I think would confirm that move to the upside. Um, again, you know, we were always trying to fight for price. I can see here, one interesting thing about this, you can zoom in really granular if you want. I mean, one interesting thing is you can just trade simple pullbacks, you know, it comes up, pulls back <clears throat> by the break of that pullback. Um, and one thing that, you know, if, if you if you ever watched my channel before, you know that I really like low volume nodes as providing support and resistance. So what we can do is as we break out of that channel, we're looking for this bullish confirmation, you know, these big green bubbles as we're moving away and we're looking for price to pull back into a low volume node. One of the things that I had mentioned in the video before, a thing that I really like is that I can insert this column. I can add a, a chart range uh, volume profile. And when I double click it, let's say we break out, I double click it. This will automatically start generating then another volume profile as we begin to move away from this downtrend line, which we had uh, out uh, over here. Um, you can see it here. As we got out, as we moved out, you know, we can open up that chart volume profile and, and see if we can identify a low volume node to get a good entry on. So lots of different ways that we're looking at trying to use this book map. I thought that um, that was an interesting example on the open, how price really sought out, hunted that liquidity. If you're on the live stream, I, I joked about using that term, hunted the liquidity as a as a bear in the in the wilderness, hunting liquidity. But um, I, I thought that was very interesting. And we can see it here as we zoom out even further. <clears throat> we can see these long, you know, long standing liquidity on the chart. Um, and how price gets sucked into it. We get sucked into some more down here, sucked into some more down here. Um, of course, we want to get, um, you know, we want to get at good prices. And so here I can see that there's, you know, a supporting trend line. You could short the break. And as this, as this breaks, I mean, I don't even need a candlestick. I can just see, you know, I can see the lower highs here, right? And then I can see the selling pressure, just sell, 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 sell. 
you see all that selling coming through on that to me that's really interesting and that's just you you know you don't need any fancy indicators or anything like that that you can just use a simple one minute chart which i could pull up right now and then you just draw that counter trend line it breaks the counter trend line and then when you see all this selling coming through on it on the break of that trend line you see all that selling coming through that's just a confirmation of of the bearish move and you're trying then to find that liquidity down here that it's seeking out um, and so that's one way that I think we're gonna we're gonna try to use this um, to our advantage. What time was this at? I'm just curious if I can see what it looked like. Eight fifty one. So let's pull up a one minute. Um, yeah, it's just on this little pullback right here, and you can see it right there. Right. So if you were in on this, if you were waiting for a pullback, you draw your little counter trend line thing there. Um, yeah. Comes up, draw your counter trend line, bearish candle, we break 20 SMA. Um, and as it breaks this trend line, you can get confirmation of that from Bookmap looking at all those sell orders really, really getting, uh, really coming through in those large red bubbles, um, uh, giving you confirmation to uh, hold it down to new lows. And remember on Bookmap, we saw that there was a big area of liquidity down here. It's also, you know, get out the bottom of the band on the one minute. I mean, we're at this low, but even if you got in up here at 09, Got 81, you know, that's 20 points. That's pretty good. 15, 20 points is pretty good. I take that. Um, so anyways, I want to just point that out. Uh, again, I'm going over my trades from this morning and I'm trying to um, just analyze everything and uh, always learning, always trying to get better. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, and uh, I'll be live streaming tomorrow, 8, 10 a.m. Central Time right here on the channel. Uh, please consider giving the video a like and an even bigger consideration to giving it a, the channel a subscribe. Um, I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. I'll hopefully see you guys back here on the channel soon. Bye.